Hello students, welcome to our next article for the week. This article is titled Tips for Students Who Are New to Virtual Learning. It's by Jacqueline Barba and it is at the level 770. Okay, the pattern now, right? Every time we get a nonfiction article, we want to pay attention to the things and details that happen before the article actually begins. So let's take a look at that picture. It's put there on purpose. So we see what looks like a student and she's got a notebook out and she's doing some, what looks like probably in a digital learning activity, something online. So it says here, a student in France does math work in a notebook and on a tablet during her school's closure due to coronavirus. Photo is Nur Photo by Getty Images. So you can see even in, in France, all over the world, schools have shut down. So students are doing digital learning. They're practicing their skills and learning new things by watching videos like what you're doing and uh, reading and writing and, and interacting with their teachers and classmates, but all through the computer from at home so that we can <clears throat> flatten that curve like we learned in the previous article. Okay, let's get started. Schools all across the country have closed in response to the coronavirus outbreak. As a result, teachers and students are making the transition to distance learning. For many students, this will be a first experience using video conferencing as a tool for learning. The rules for virtual learning are a little different than the rules we follow in a physical classroom. Here are a few tips to help students adjust to their new setup. These guidelines will help them engage in a virtual class time and troubleshoot any related challenges. Subheading one, find a quiet place to set up. A quiet environment is important for virtual class time. Choose a spot where there will be minimal distractions. Try to sit away from the flow of family traffic. If you can, set up your device at a desk, table, or countertop so that your hands are free to take notes and flip through class materials. Number two, prepare for class. Just like ordinary class time, you'll want to have your materials ready when the lesson begins. Gather your books and notes. Make sure you have any printouts you may need to look at during the session too. And of course, have a pen and paper handy. Finally, let your family members know you're about to start class. This way, they can be mindful of their volume and avoid distracting you. Subheading three, set a goal for yourself. Begin your virtual learning time with a deliberate intention. This will give extra purpose to your session and help you focus on the content at hand. Here are a few examples of class time goals you can set. Learn one new thing from a classmate. Ask one question. Share one piece of positive feedback. Some goals I would like my students to set is getting in the habit of checking Teams each day and engaging with the questions that I post on the announcements so that you can interact with your classmates and ask your teacher questions too. That's a good way to kind of stay involved even though you're home and not in the actual classroom, we can try and make it feel like it's in a classroom just digitally. Next subheading. Check, are you muted? Before lesson time starts, make sure to mute yourself. Background noises such as typing, chewing, or barking, and meowing pets may not sound like much on your side. These noises can amplify though. They can sound like a real ruckus across your teachers and classmate speakers. Most audio mute buttons look like a little microphone. You'll know you're muted when you see an X or slash above the button. <clears throat> now, in not in Oldbridge yet, but in other schools, like my son's school, for example, a lot of his school class time, he has to use programs called Zoom and um, a Google Meet, which is basically there's a video camera and he can see his teacher and his teacher can see him through the camera and his computer. And he can also see and hear his classmates. 
And so that's what they're talking about. And this one with the muted, we don't do this yet in Old Bridge, but in a lot of school different districts, they're doing um, virtual learning through conferencing. Just And that just means that their computer's recording their face and, and the sounds, and they're interacting that way through like a, a like almost like a phone call, but they can see each other. Okay, so it says, double check, are you really muted? Just making sure. So to be muted means like you turn your sound off. Practice active listening. It can be easy to get distracted when you're sitting in front of a device. Try active listening strategies. They'll help you maintain focus. To show that you're paying attention to the speaker, keep your eyes on the screen rather than looking around the room. Nod, smile, and react to what you're hearing. Even though you're alone, you can react just the way you would in the classroom. Use a pen and paper to jot down the main ideas of the lesson. This will push you to listen closely. Finally, don't let yourself browse the web. Expand your virtual learning window to full size. Don't open other windows or apps on your device during class time. Okay, so I know it's hard being on the computer, and I know even in school, sometimes when we use our computers, we get distracted and we start going on other sites. We play video games or we go on YouTube or we toggle in and out of the music. And all of that is, is distracting from what it is that we really need to do. Also makes it so that we're missing directions and instructions. So if you're on five different tabs and, and kind of doing your work but doing other things too, that's not a really good thing to do because it is gonna distract you from focusing on your lesson. <clears throat> Follow your teacher's instructions. In an ordinary classroom, your teacher can see if you are raising your hand to speak or share. That's not so easy in virtual learning. So be sure to follow the teacher's instructions on how to show that you'd like to ask or answer a question. This may involve using a virtual hand raise feature in the platform. It could also involve typing a message into a chat box. Practice patience during the question and answer parts of the lesson. There may be a bit of a delay between the person speaking and those listening. Pause for a moment before you respond. And if you're speaking out loud, make sure to unmute your microphone first. Then mute yourself again when you return to your listening mode. So again, this is talking a lot about the video, but again, we also have our Teams page with the announcements. And on there, you can reply to the different messages that I post. So that's a great place for you to type in any questions that you have. Or if you're unsure about the directions, type it inside those announcements that are posted each day. And then Mrs. Clark or I will, will get back to you as soon as possible and help you get through your, your lesson so that you're not frustrated or confused. Stay engaged through chat. As long as your teacher gives the okay, you can use the chat feature in your platform. It's the perfect place to ask questions or agree with what your classmates are sharing. It's not quite the same as being in a room together. Still, it is an easy way to stay connected to your classmates while you're apart. Keep calm and troubleshoot. Has something gone wrong during your session? Screen froze, bumped from the class, app crashed? Don't panic. Technical problems are bound to happen. Try logging back on. If that doesn't work, take steps to figure out if the problem was on your side. Check your Wi-Fi. Is it still connected? Restart your computer if you need to. You can also check your email for communications from your teacher in case the problem occurred on their side. If all else, fa all else fails, keep calm and try logging on again. Okay, so again, just like in class, if you run into a problem where you can't log in or there's some kind of issues technically, Keep giving it a try. Try resetting your Wi-Fi if you need to. Reread the directions. And if you're still having trouble, then reach out for help. Okay, let's get to the quiz questions. Question number one. Select the sentence that summarizes the article. A. Students doing virtual learning right now are doing it because schools have closed due to coronavirus. B. Schools doing virtual learning need to find a spot that is away from their family so they can pay attention. C. Students doing virtual learning get advice on setting up, participating in class, and solving technical problems. D. Students doing virtual learning should make sure that their microphones are muted to avoid distracting the teacher.
Question number two. How does the information in the section, follow your teacher's instructions, support the main idea of the article? A. By describing ways to fix the Wi-Fi so students can stay connected. B. By describing what a virtual learning lesson might look like. C. By highlighting the most popular virtual learning apps. D. By highlighting the easiest lessons to give through virtual learning. Question three, read the following paragraph from the section, practice active listening. It can be easy to get distracted when you're sitting in front of a device. Try active listening strategies. They'll help you maintain focus to show that you're paying attention to the speaker. Keep your eyes on the screen rather than looking around the room. Nod, smile, and react to what you're hearing. Even though you're alone, you can react just the way you would in the classroom. Use a pen and paper to jot down the main ideas of the lesson. This will push you to listen closely. Finally, don't let yourself browse the web. Expand your virtual learning window to full size. Don't open other windows or apps on your device during class time. What is the structure of this paragraph? A, comparison. B, events in order. C, cause and effect. Or D, problem and solution. And question number four, read the paragraph from the section, prepare for class. Just like ordinary class time, you'll want to have your materials ready when the lesson begins. Gather your books and notes. Make sure you have any printouts you may need to look at during the session too. And of course, have a pen and paper handy. Finally, let your family members know you're about to start class. This way, they can be mindful of their volume and avoid distracting you. What does this paragraph do in the section? A. It lists ways to get ready for a virtual learning lesson. B. It explains what to do if you cannot watch your class. C. It shows how teachers can include parents in the lessons. D. It highlights the reason why more kids are using virtual learning. Now that you've finished all of the questions for the quiz, what you're going to do next is the writing response for the open-ended question. So again, it's the same structure as before. You're going to tell me what the main idea of this article was. You're going to go back and look at the different subsections and pull out some details that helped you understand what the big message was. And then you're going to tell me why this is important or even relevant right now. Why is it important to learn about these tips and strategies for remote learning and digital learning, virtual learning. Why might that be important to think about right now? Good luck.